And today I want to share a little bit about why it can be so hard to stick with a plan. We all know that as the new year approaches, it's a good time to start planning for your new year and what you want to have be different and things you'd like to do and accomplish. And yet every year, so many of us stop actually achieving and get caught up in the failures, right? And so I want to talk a little bit about how my clients, especially because they tend to be more creative um, and interested in a lot of things, tend to give up or resist planning in the first place. So does the idea of some constraints to your day, your free flowing um, desire to just go on about your day as things come up, does the feeling of making a plan involve anxiety? Does it involve potentially hyperventilating and maybe breaking out in hives? <laughs> You're thinking about it all wrong. So I want to let you know a little secret. Putting constraints around your time and around your stuff actually allows you to be more creative with less effort and achieve more. So it's all about unleashing your creativity and your efforts to get your desired outcome. It's not about making you follow this set of rules. It can be a flexible framework and it can take you from everything and anything is possible and not knowing what to work on next to only this thing is possible in this moment. Right now I'm going to work on this and then we'll move on to something else. Isn't that amazing? You'll actually achieve what you're setting out to achieve. It's kind of weird, right? But think about it. Some very simple constraints involve having a deadline for something. Many of us are very good with deadlines. Some of us, not so much, but maybe just reframing it a little bit. Maybe saying you're going to be done before that actual deadline to give yourself a cushion. Or maybe it's, can I get it done right down to the second, which is how I tend to work. Um, but having a constraint in place that you are going to finish a certain project and a certain time allows you to actually get it done in that certain amount of time because you have no longer left it open-ended. Some projects can be open-ended for a long time, but as soon as you put a deadline on, it's time to finish and complete that project. The other thing it can do is lead to MacGyver-like solutions. Our brains love problem solving. So why not give it something to solve? Why not put some effort into creating constraints that are really interesting and tap into that problem solving ability. What if I had to complete this project and not run to the store to get the things I need that seem like I need to get them done? Would you find the stuff you need already in your house? Would you borrow something? Would you change the scope of a project just to use the things you have on hand? That's what I mean by MacGyver type solutions. It's creative. Work with what you have to create the best possible outcome with those things. It's great uh, creativity exercise as well. Um, having another constraint of working on the same thing over and over or working till you complete something allows you to get really great at that thing. Your brain focuses on the one project and so it looks at it from a lot more angles and can pull in other side information if you let it marinate within that space of that project, of your thing. Instead of starting yet another business, get this one up and running first. Instead of starting yet another project, finish it well and take the lessons learned to the next project. So you get really great at one thing. and. Um, it's not saying only one thing ever in the rest of your life. It means master something and then move on to the next phase because you can go either deep on a few things that really light you up or you can go superficial on a whole lot of things and never quite um, attain that sense of satisfaction that really gets us up in the morning. <laughs> um, and you can do all that without the wasted energy. By planning ahead, 
you take a bit of the in the moment decision making out of the equation. And so you can save energy, actual decision making energy that way. Think about it. When you don't make it the decision that you're going to do something at a certain date and time, instead winging it all the time, you're more likely to be interrupted. And that leads to multitasking, which leads to scattered focus, which leads to more energy and frustration and exhaustion. So why not plan on, I'm going to do this and stick with that plan till that thing is done, saving energy, time, coming up with creative solutions, feeling more satisfied at the end because you completed something, right? So good. It also allows you to in, um, enjoy a sense of um, control. Because when you start completing things, you feel more in control. You feel like you have um, a sense of agency over how you spend your time. Like I decided I'd finish this project. I worked on it. I came up with some interesting solutions. I didn't have all the stuff, but it worked out. And now I feel good about myself. And I know how I was going to spend my day. And I did it. And now I feel control. Right. So life is kind of uncertain, but there are certain aspects you can control how you spend your time being one of them. That is always up to you. Um, but planning is the piece that allows your brain to know what it is you're going to work on. If you just wing it, you're going to do this and then you're going to do that and then you're going to get stuck over there and then you're going to go in the other room and do that thing. And then you're going to come back and go, I didn't get all my stuff done. Right. But when you plan, your brain knows oh, this is what I'm going to work on today. Now, next, and after that, that's what I'm working on today. And your brain automatically starts setting things in motion. It starts pulling patterns together for you to complete those tasks without interruption from other bright, shiny objects. You just park those. You write them on a list for later without full interruption. And then you can keep working on what you're working with, right? That's where satisfaction comes in. So anyway, it turns out the stress is actually from changing your mind about what you're working on. I'm doing this, but now I'm doing that. And then now I'm doing that. And then I'm doing that. It gets confusing. You want to actually stick with a plan as much as possible. Sometimes there's an interruption, but you come back to the original plan until it's done. All right. You can find a lot more insight about how these things work together, how planning your time and what to work on um, helps you achieve more with less effort and really expands your creativity and problem solving ability. So I'm running a review and plan acceleration day on December uh, 15th. And it is a day where I help you ask yourself the right questions to review what happened in 2023. So you know what to carry forward into 2024 and to plan a little bit into 2024. So you know what to work on and you'll be more likely to achieve the things you'd like to address with your new year's resolutions. I don't really believe in resolutions, but there are desired outcomes we'd like to have for each new year, whether you're measuring it from January or from a birthday or whenever you decide that is, you want to know the process of reviewing, getting oriented, deciding um, on some of the bigger chunks to carry forward into the new year. So you have at least that flexible framework to keep your brain working towards completion. All right. That's it for uh, this week. I will see you next week. In the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, tell all your friends, um, share, and enjoy. Have a delightful day.